your colleagues welcome to the day four wrap up of ASCO 23. Starting with the phase three Thor trial, compare the efficacy of erdafinib and chemotherapy in patients with advanced urothelial cancer. Results showed that erdafinib significantly improved overall survival, progression free survival, and overall response rate compared to chemotherapy. The trial demonstrated the importance of testing for FGFR mutations in metastatic urothelial cancer patients and highlighted the need for better treatment and sequencing and combination strategies. Erdafinib's safety profile was favorable and further research is required to understand the adverse events associated with other recommended agents. The CLEAR study, the combination of lumbatinib plus prembolizumab have shown significant superiority over sinitinib as first-line treatment for advanced renal cell carcinoma. Extended follow-up data from the CLEAR study reaffirmed the current practice of frontline combination immunotherapy TKI. The updated results indicate a median overall survival of 53.7 months with lenvatinib plus pembrolizumab compared to 54.3 months with sunidinib. The combination therapy demonstrated a higher benefit for intermediate and poor-risk subgroups. The progression-free survival benefit remained consistent with a median PFS of 23.9 months for lenvatinib plus pembrolizumab as opposed to 9.2 months for sunidinib. Objective response rates were 71.3% and 36.7% for lenvatinib plus mepiluzumab and sinitinib, respectively. Although the combination therapy showed benefit across all risk groups, its impact on OS as a favorable risk subgroup was comparatively smaller. While the study affirms the advantages of lenvatinib plus pembrolizumab over monotherapy, it does appear significantly superior to other contemporary IO-containing regimens in terms of long-term OS. Contact O3 adding atezolizumab to cabozatinib in second line for advanced renal cell carcinoma offers no advantage. A study comparing the use of cabozatinib alone versus cabozatinib combined with atezolizumab in patients with advanced renal cell carcinoma who experienced disease progression on immune checkpoint inhibitors found no significant difference in median progression-free survival, overall survival, or response rates between the two treatment groups. However, the combination therapy was associated with an increased toxicity compared to monotherapy. The study highlights the importance of conducting randomized prospective trials to evaluate the re-challenge with checkpoint inhibitors and PD-1, PDL-1 inhibitors in RCC and other tumor types. The results emphasize the need for further research in this area. Finishing off with the SONIA trial, no significant difference in time of progression or overall survival was found between the first line and second line use of a CDK4-6 inhibitor plus endocrine therapy in HR-positive or two negative advanced breast cancer. First-line treatment led to increased toxicity and higher drug costs due to longer treatment duration. The SONIA trial provided important information not captured in pivotal clinical trials, highlighting the need to reconsider the current practice of using CDK4-6 inhibitors as first-line therapy for all patients. Identifying patients who may benefit from this first-line endocrine therapy alone is crucial. The trial emphasizes the importance of balancing therapeutic benefits and minimizing harm, toxicity, and cost in treatment and decisions. The findings contribute to the advancing of personalized treatment approaches for HR positive, H2 negative advanced breast cancer. And there you have it, folks, your day four roundup. Enjoy the last day in Chicago.